Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This will be the first in the uh, set of videos all about dendrobiums, basically. And I've picked on the um, Nobly hybrids first, mainly because it's the one that most people will have. If you find somebody that's only got one dendrobium, the chances are it's a Nobly hybrid. Not necessarily, but you know. And the reason is that these have gone into the mass producers along with the phalaenopsis and some of the oncidium into generics so these are mass produced and therein lies the initial problem with nobly hybrids <coughs> that have come from such places you can buy a nobly hybrid in full bloom any time of year that's not naturally what would happen yeah so they're what I call out of season they're forced into bloom yeah and in doing so they're not quite right in their makeup now there are exceptions but in the main most nobly related hybrids bloom in late winter into spring that is their natural time some of the more vigorous ones can have the odd bloom at other times of year but that would be their their main flush yeah <clears throat> and the reason is their normal growth pattern is to bloom and then either during that blooming phase or not long after the new growth start so you're looking at new growths early in the growing season yeah they will then grow on right through the season feed and water well <laughs> And the reason you need to feed and water well is that's the potential. That's a single cane. That would grow in one growing season. That's a lot of growth for an orchid in one season. So <clears throat> they're not all that big, but quite a few of them are. And that in therein lies the second problem. A lot of the mass-produced ones, uh, they use growth inhibitors to limit the size of the plant. So the canes that you get in full bloom are often not the full potential size of the canes on that particular plant. So what you bought as a nice compact plant with loads of blooms down the full length of the cane probably ain't going to do that again. The next canes may well be larger and may not bloom over the whole length. Yeah? They're it's controlled conditions, um, special types of feeds and hormones and growth restrictors that, that we just don't generally have. So we're not going to recreate that initial purchase, but we can get pretty close. <laughs> <clears throat> so not all noblies will stick to the size that you bought them at. Yeah? So they, they, they can grow quite a bit bigger. And I've got some examples we'll go over in a minute. So anyway, growing season, feed and water well. Now, this one was bought out of season. I got this at the Burnham's... Um, did I get it on our coach trip? I can't remember. But this was bought this year. Um, and it was in full bloom over these two older canes. Or what previous year's growths, basically. Um, and I could see it was going to be a big one. Now I got this a bit cheaper because it had a new new growth that was damaged over here, down there. It had a new growth that had been broken. <clears throat> but nonetheless, it had two new ones coming. So I thought, well, that'll do. Should have been three, but two will do. And these two canes were about half size chopped off. And they look awful. They don't look that elegant cut down there, but they look better than they did before. So those half canes that are just chopped off are of no use. They need to come off. They're just draining the plant, basically. They have no, most of the time, they have no leaves on them. They're not going to grow roots, and they're probably not going to shoot out. So they just as well come off. They're older canes cut like that to make the plant look tidier to sell. Yeah, not cut off by orchid growers. Right, so... <coughs> Seasons growth, feed and water well, they will drink, yeah? They'll also produce their new root systems during that growing season, and some of those can be pretty extensive. Um, I still maintain that with 
the majority of dendrobiums, the smaller the pot you can get them in, the better. But once the root systems really take off, they're going to need a bigger pot. You also have a stability problem. A, a plant this big in a small plot, pot is just not going to stand up. It's going to fall over constantly. So it would need to be stood in perhaps a larger, heavier pot to get over that problem. So anyway, on this particular plant, this year's growths, which started late, are still growing. So this one is still getting fed and watered. They don't care what the time of year is. The plant is growing. Yeah? So that's that one. Now, under normal circumstances, towards the end of the year, <coughs> the canes on the nobly hybrids will start producing their terminal leaf. And this is a leaf that should be pretty obvious. <laughs> it's a single leaf that sticks out the top, virtually bolt upright. That's one. Um, although we're looking at the back of the plant over here, which I'll show it around the front, but that is one. You see, it's a single leaf sticking straight up. This is one. These are all terminal leaves on different types of plants. There's another one here. Yeah, so that's what they look like. Now, however, on this one, terminal leaf's not quite so obvious. But it's finished, that cane's finished growing. <laughs> so anyway, they reach their terminal leaf. They haven't finished growing at that point, not quite yet. So although they're not going to grow any more leaves, the canes will still continue to swell and probably still extend their length a bit. The nodes between the leaves still carry on getting longer. Most people don't notice that. So they haven't really finished growing. They're just not producing any more new leaves. But they haven't finished growing. So don't be too <laughs> enthusiastic about cutting off their water and feed supply. Um, there will come a time when they have finished growing and under normal circumstances that's going to be well into autumn heading towards winter so during that phase you wean them off the food you don't cut it it's not a date on the calendar where you say right no more food for you matey do it gently so reduce the feed levels and under normal circumstances this will be at a time of year when the days are getting shorter it's probably not as warm, yeah? So the plants aren't as enthusiastic about growing as they perhaps once were back in the growing season. So they're slowing up anyway. And at that time, <clears throat> because they're slowing up, shorter days, lower temperatures, they're not going to drink that water as fast. So ones that are in pots, you'll find are starting to stay wet longer than they used to. That's when you need to go careful. Because as they finish their growth, you end up with soggy pots, especially if you water on a certain day of the week. Yeah, so take care as you get into that transition phase between full growth, slowing up, and stopping altogether, which they will do during the winter. Now you'll get the odd nobly that decides to play silly bees and puts up its new growth in August and September. And you sort of think, you get, you get to, you know, end of October, beginning of November, and you think, what am I going to do? My canes are still growing. I would suggest if your canes are still growing, then keep them growing. You've probably got a nobly that's a bit out of season. And it's pushed its new canes up at a time it wouldn't normally do. So, if it's growing, try and keep it growing. It won't grow as well, and you usually find canes on nobilies that start late in the season never reach their full size because of the shorter days. Yeah. They don't get their growing time like they would do if they'd started back in sort of March, April time. But they will still grow, they will still bloom, just not as well. So don't write them off, <clears throat> and certainly don't starve them and you know reduce the water down so that they can't grow if they want to grow these two are still growing yeah they're going to be left to grow yeah and then you get into the problem where you read in the books that the dendrobium nobly needs a, a cold dry bright winter rest no feed or water for a couple of months 
Yeah, well, if you want to see all your cane shrivel up <laughs> into a tight little crispy thing like that and all your leaves drop off, then have a go at doing it that way if you like. These are nobly hybrids. They're not the species. The species does come from an area where it would get that sort of winter. And they can get quite cold. I wouldn't do that with the hybrids. They will take quite low temperatures in the winter, providing they're much, much drier. You get them really cold like that with a wet pot, you're going to probably lose your roots. So <clears throat> it's all a balance, it's all a balance. But quite honestly, I have never given Nobly Hybrids a full winter rest. And you've seen what some of mine look like in the spring as far as blooming is concerned. I don't believe I'm losing any blooms as a consequence. They do it anyway. So you don't need to go too mad with these. If you can cool them down a bit, great. If you can give them more light during those winter months, great. And if you can't do either of those, they'll probably bloom anyway. They just might not bloom quite as well as they would have done given those extra little bits of help. Right, so let's have a look at some. I've got some in pots and some on mounts, and I've got different shapes and sizes here. <clears throat> I'll get this one out of the way first. This is what's left of my giant spring dreamer pollen. All the good bits went to other people, and I, I, I kept myself one little piece, which has only grown one new cane this year, and it's nowhere near as big as it can be. But, it's grown some roots, it's put up a new growth. I'm afraid if that one attempts to bloom in the spring, which it probably will, it'll get stopped. I'll take the blooms off when the spikes get just, just pushing out so that I can see them and get hold of them, not nubbins, but actual growths, I'll snip them off. And the reason being that by taking those off, it should push that base into growth more strongly and earlier in the season and I'm hoping to get at least two next year and by starting them early in the season if I can they should get back up to full size and then I'll be heading back towards the plant I once had. I knew that was going to be some work but I was prepared to do it. Um, no, so I need to get stuff out of the way because that, that one just keeps falling over it's in such a small pot. Right coming round here we've got a real odd one. This has always been an oddball ever since I got it. Um, I'll put pop-ups because the names aren't going to spring to mind. Um, but this one did manage to push a bloom out um, like, but this spring. So I, I think I've got a picture for this one. Um, and it's grown a short fat cane. The previous one was a short fat cane. This is a kiki taken off a mother plant that didn't look anything like that and never grew properly for me. It just would not grow. It would only produce kikis. It never, ever produced a cane from the base of the plant. Well, it has this time. And it's an odd shape. So I don't know what that one's up to. It's never been a large plant, don't get me wrong. Even the mother plant that the kiki came off was, was not large. It was probably only... Longest cane was probably about eight or nine inches. I'm not going to do metric today. <laughs> you might be able to tell I'm not in the... Uh, I'm not in the best of health today. I think I'm going down with the dreaded lurgy. I've got a sore throat and a headache, <clears throat> which could be the sign of more to come. But we'll, we won't, we'll live with it. Now this one has got no tag on it. And from memory, and it is nothing more than a memory, I think that is Stardust Firebird. Um, and just looking at where the spikes came off last time, and relatively confident but nonetheless it is a nobly type it's had trouble with its leaves this year but it did grow a single new cane and it is trying to grow another one now in the middle of October now, where, that one is highly likely to fail quite honestly but nonetheless I have a cane that's another one if that attempts to bloom it'll get stopped it's not strong enough yet. I want at least another two nice strong canes on there. And again, that cane's nowhere near full size. It started late in the season, so it hasn't had a full growing season. But it's finished growing now. So that's that one. Now over here, this one, <clears throat> I do know what this one, and that one's going to fall over, I know it is. That's Comet King. 
<laughs> and because of where it's been hanging, it faces the back of the mount. Um, if I turn that round and face face it in the other direction, those leaves will probably turn round again. But I'm not fussed either way because um, this is another one. I nearly lost this. This was a Kiki from Rachel and um, it was virtually gone. And I thought, well, I'm going to try mounting it and just see what happens. And it pushed out what is, for this plant, not a bad cane. It's nowhere near full size. They, they can get at least twice as big as that. But it's grown a good one and a new set of roots. And some of those roots came off the older part of the plant. So I'm now happy with the plant. The plant is going to survive. It's going to prosper. But I won't let that bloom. That bloomed at the beginning of this year on that old cane. Okay, it was only one spike. And again, it delayed the start of the new growth because I let it bloom. So next year, no blooms for you, sunshine. Ugh. Now this one was a gift. And I've got a clue what this one's going to be like, but it is a nobly type. <laughs> I think this was a gift from Mark, I think. And um, it got mounted straight away. It's pushed up some new growths. Most of them have not reached full size, but nonetheless they have produced a good root system. So as a consequence of the new growth, I've now got a good root system on here. And I don't see any signs of old blooms on this plant. None. So this doesn't look to me as though it's bloomed before. And given the tiny little pseudo bulbs at the base, it's been grown on from a seedling. Yeah? So it's coming up to blooming size. This may be a smaller version of a nobly type. Depends what went into it, and it depends what else was added. You know, obviously if it's a nobly type, it's got nobly the species buried in there somewhere. But sometimes things are called a nobly type when there's only about 10% of the nobly in there. <laughs> so uh, it's pushing your luck calling it a nobly. And, um, you know, if in a hybrid that's got 50% of something else in there and only 10% nobly, I'd run with the care for the 50% and forget the other bits in there. So, you know, what's your, uh, what's your makeup of your noblies? Again, because of the way this one's been facing, the leaves are all pointing to the back of the mount, so it doesn't look so elegant from this side. I suspect on some of these larger, older canes, we may get some blooms. That one will be allowed to bloom. Firstly, because I want to see what the hell they look like, because <laughs> that's a non-bloomer. And I want to see them. I may not leave them there for their full duration, but that's a reasonably strong plant now. It's got a good root system. It's got some new canes, okay, they're not full size, and they have finished growing. But I suspect next year, this seems to have a growth habit that pushes out quite a few new growths. So it may be one of the shorter, stumpier ones that just produces lots and lots of canes, but they don't grow at all. Have to wait and see. But that one, I, I want to see the blooms on that one, because that's a, an unknown. <laughs> Now this is another weirdo that's classed as a nobly and buried in there is nobly somewhere. This is my wedding bells. Now this is a genuine oddity because it's normal flowering time is the middle of summer. It's never done anything different. That is its blooming time. This one is a tall one and it's a slim one. I've got a feeling this one would grow better mounted pendulous. In other words, allow it to hang downwards, because obviously this is stake to keep it upright. Um, plant was uh, distinctly split right down, um, and this was the best bit, believe it or not. But this one's still growing, although I've got a feeling this latest leaf may well be its last for this year, but we shall see. So that could be its terminal leaf, but it's too early to tell. Well, it's definitely not, because there's another one coming up inside there. So that one's still growing. So let it grow. Don't let it dry out for any length of time. Let it grow. And um, this one naturally has very tall, slim canes. They're not self-supporting. The only reason that thing's staying upright 
It's because it's got a stake on it. That's not natural. This one is one of those that does that. Yeah? And it ends up being quite wide and yet it's still got some height. So it takes up a lot of space when it's a well-grown plant. Um, and I'm still not what sh sure what to do with it. The initial thing was to get it to grow some roots and extend the cane to get more leaves to help feed it with the photosynthesis. Well, it's grown some roots. It's got a good sized cane on it now. That may get mounted next year and become one of my upside down pendulous ones. And quite a few dendrobiums grow that way. Nobilies can grow that way, but it's not natural for them. They do tend to be more upright plants and they have normally got the strength to hold themselves upright. But uh, if you do look at that, if you look how thin that is and how thin it gets as it gets higher, there's an awful lot of weight in that section held up by that little one. But as they grow, this gets very, very woody, very, very firm. So they can hold themselves upright. I mean, these two canes have got no support at all. The only reason they're leaning outwards is because they couldn't get up through here but they are upright. These are not held, they're not tied and they're not going to lean on over anymore, they'll stay like that. So that will be their new angle and they will get strapped up a little bit more upright for the next year's growing season to leave some space for some new ones to come out. So that's an oddity this one, wedding bells. Skinny little canes and very tall and as such not so easy to look after I mean, you know, as a plant, not, not, not to grow. Grows well. Right, so then we get to this one. And there's nothing more to say about this one. These two canes were on it when I got it, and it was in full bloom. Yeah, they lasted reasonably well, although when I got it off of Sarah, she said those blooms have been open quite a while. I don't know how much longer they're going to last. Um, well, they lasted a reasonable amount of time. And nobody blooms can last quite a long time. Some of them don't, but many do. Uh, again, you won't know when you buy it unless somebody else has had one before. So that's that one. <clears throat> and then over here is my prima donna that I'm hoping is going to stay upright. No, it's not. <laughs> Let's just lean it slightly then. Very difficult, this one. Um, it's because it's in such a small pot and it's a tall plant. Now, the good bits of this went to other people, but what I was left with, I'll have to hold it, was all the old canes round here, they've bloomed. They may bloom again in the spring from odd places. There are a few nodes that could still produce nubbins in the spring. Um, so we may get a few odd blooms on those really old canes, but those were bundled up together and tied to a stake upright to try and hold the plant and then desperately trying to get new canes to grow. Well, I managed to get some new canes. Oh, it'll stay up now, won't it? So we've got this one, this one, and this one. So I've got some new canes. It also, late in the season, produced this little one. That's not going anywhere. That's finished growing. So that's just sitting there. It's a few extra leaves for the plant, but it's not going to grow anymore. That's it. Um, and during this year, it's produced a good root system, so it's now quite a happy bunny. Not a patch on the plant it once was, which got best hybrid in show. Uh, was it last year or the year before? Anyway, it has done in the past. So this is a plant that's coming back towards its full glory. Probably another, maybe two years, but definitely one. So next year, these canes, if they decide to bloom, I'll let some blooms come. But I might take some spikes off. I don't want to weaken the plant too much. I'd rather sacrifice some blooms at the beginning of next year to get a much better plant by the end of next year. So I've got sort of plans for this one. I'm working on getting this back. Eventually, if I can produce another three or four new growths next year, quite a few of those older canes will get snipped off because that they'll have served their purpose some of these old canes have still got some leaves up the top they're still of use if they've got leaves on but some of them have long since lost their leaves so um, 
there will come a time when the number of new canes equals or is greater than the number of old canes. When it's in that state, you can take some of the older canes off. When your number of old canes greatly exceeds the new canes, the new part of the plant isn't really strong enough to sacrifice its storage or organs, which is what the old canes are. They store energy which can be pushed into new parts of the plant. So only when the new part of the plant is as strong or preferably stronger than the older part is it worth thinking about taking the older part off. I think it's about to chuck it down again, it's gone all dark. <laughs> We're supposed to be getting gales and thunderstorms today. <clears throat> So that's really nobilies. Um, they don't need high light in their growing season. They'll grow. They'll grow in good light. They don't need high light. However, if you can increase their light through the winter months, you'll probably get a better blooming. You'll get more blooms. Yeah. Um, so you increase the power of the blooming by giving them that brighter light through the winter. They can be fooled by keeping them in a not a low light, but a, you know, medium-ish light, shall I say, through the growing season, and then putting them in a brighter position, even though that might not be a high light position, it's a lot higher than they were in during the growing season, and they're fooled into thinking they've got bright light, and it works. <laughs> so, through the winter, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> cool them down a bit if you can, Give them brighter light if you can, and if you can't, don't panic, they're not going to die, you'll still get some blooms I expect. Most of these um, mass produced hybrids are going to bloom, one way, whatever you do to them almost. But do try and make sure you keep your root system. And again, it's the same as I've always said with orchids, if you have to repot or you want to change from a pot to a mount, or a mount to a pot, do it when you can see roots growing. If you do it with an old tired root system it may decide to dump that root system and if it hasn't got any new ones coming it's now a rootless plant for a period of time. Yeah. So again repotting or changing from a pot to a mount. Um, do it when there's good roots growing yeah, and you can see them. Yeah. And um, they, they should kick off with very little if any setback so they've got an active root system that's expanding. It... Yeah, we got thunder. Yay! Proper storm. <laughs> so I love storms. Don't like being out in them, but I like watching them. Let's put it that way. Um, well, one of my cats is out. I don't know what he'll be doing now. And the other one will be cowering somewhere in the house because they don't like it. Anyway, so that's Nobilies. Um, some of my other orchids, dendrobiums, get grown the same as the nobilies do. And I'll point those out as we sort of go along, if you see what I mean. I mean, it's, it's strange. I mean, I'm just going to pick that one up because it's under my nose. If, I di if you didn't know any better, you'd sort of think, oh, that's a nobly. <laughs> oh, that is far from it. <laughs> First of all, it's a species, and it's not a nobly. But it grows in a very similar manner. It looks similar. Same sort of care yeah so yeah <laughs> there are other dendrobiums that can have the same care as the nobilies <clears throat> but these do like that drier brighter cooler period in winter I don't believe they need anything like a full winter rest but if you've got the actual species or a clonal version of the species not a hybrid then yes they do Otherwise, you'll probably be fine, whatever you do to them. They'll probably bloom anyway. As long as you keep them alive, get some good canes going, get a good root system underneath them, they'll have the strength to bloom and they'll just do it. Okay, so that's Nobilies done, and we'll move on to some of the other types um, yeah, in another video. See you next time. Thanks for dropping by. <laughs>